previously on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Go is gonna come over to start making out with Muko. Like, ah, oh, plot twist. You were wrong, Miss Murimura. I was in fact in love with Muko this whole time, but I just didn't know how to express my feelings. Uh, go to Senpai. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's what's happening in Muko's head right now. <laughs> What's she doing over there? I don't know. Probably daydreaming about you. <sighs> Well, whatever. We just leave her and they walk away. Hey, Miwako died that day. And now back to... The f*** is this? The f*** was that? The f*** are you? Ah! Hello! Sneaky P. Back with some more. 30 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. When we last left off, we continued some with Gota Story and finished off Takatoshi's. And we found out that this whole fucking world is not real. It's the Matrix, baby. That's right. We squeezed in a Matrix reference in here after all. And I was, you know, like first I was like, I was like, okay, I think this is all right. And then the more I sort of thought of it, I was like, I don't know, I was like, something bothers me about this. And I think I was having a hard time at the end of the last episode, really like fully like conveying like, what was bothering me about some of this? I think some of it is the fact that, you know, so many things got like recreated in the world, right? Like the androids and everything. Like Tetsuya Ida used science to create these uh, androids with their personalities and everything. And I, I guess part of it was like, well, they did that within the confines of this program. Like, like how in depth and insane is this program? Cause I, I don't know. Have we seen any moments in this like this virtual world where the cracks have started to show a bit like because even in the matrix like you could still see moments where the world wasn't quite right you know um things that didn't quite make sense it didn't seem like there was quite as many moments where that happened here i don't think i mean i guess it's not necessarily necessary but it makes it more like they hinted at it that this was something that existed i mean like i said i managed to to make a guess at it a crack guess at it when i was thinking about what happened with Nenji, because i was like why is he in the pod there but i just and i just threw out there well maybe it's he's in like this is a matrix shit or something uh so and I, that that was the other thing and i don't know maybe there were and i just i didn't notice or i didn't catch on i still have to really kind of go back and analyze some stuff so you know that was it was sort of bothering me but you guys did sort of clarify a few things that i think helped a bit uh and someone who did that really well was uh adila r who uh, last episode said hey nico you know what's funny remember when you did talk to this prologue and saw kino kiriko for the first time the first thing you said was she looks sort of like iori well now you know <laughs> oh my god really i don't even remember saying that sweet <laughs> bullshit power strike in uh edit after finishing the video i want to add regarding why the simulation is structured like that and why there needs to be five areas if you watch the 2188 log between morimura and mira they mentioned that the group couldn't decide on a specific time period so they went with five different ones Mira assigned with di designing the architecture probably used the colony's construction as a base structure when making it. In the log, he mentioned that the shape is similar. While they were in 2188, there's probably a still a limit to how much the tech and storage can handle a realistic simulation, so an open world would probably break the system. And the rest is then left to Aquino to create universal control who alters things so everything seems consistent. Not to mention, you can already tell the survivors of the 2188 colony were short on time and resources. They were desperate. Heck, Mira was probably working overtime alone, making sure all the architecture and texts were historically accurate for five different eras. Gotta appreciate the guy's work. That's a good point. I didn't think about it even so much as it being just a time constraint. So he just went was what was simpler. And something else that I saw some other people mentioned was that Ok Okino was by nature a bit of a lazy programmer, which is why he used the uh the AI from a uh a kaiju daimos game, right? Uh, because apparently the AI in that game is so like was so supremely amazing when the game originally came out that he decided to use that as the base for the AI of the world here, as well as of course what ended up becoming the kaiju, you know, attacking everybody. So they sort of made do with what they had. So that's a good point. So they that's sort of why this is really modeled to look after this ship instead of maybe just having one coherent place. Because like you said, they there were people that were conflicted over what they wanted the time period to do, so they made time periods like and since they pick five different time periods like well like for the five sectors of the ship let's just base it off of something like that yeah yeah i suppose that that, that makes a bit more sense um but adela r thank you so much for your uh your clarification that really did help me sort of piece together a bit better and it's for that reason you are comment of the day there's something else that sort of i think i was i couldn't really figure out what was bothering me about it and i, th I think it kind of hit me now what is the purpose of having these terraforming robots right if this is not real and this is simply a simply a simple a simulation why have terraforming robots that can turn into kaiju it's like 
Because the whole point, I thought, was that we were terraforming another planet. That was their purpose, but they're not real. And then it hit me off, off, uh, off screen. This is very likely the simulation or a simulation similar to it, uh, to the one that Kisaragi from 2188 was running, right? Where she said it took 1800 years to, to terraform a usable planet in the simulation, a simulation like ours. So maybe the purpose then is simply to, that this is that simulation or at least that same technology, because there's got to be a reason that they even had these quote unquote terraforming robots there that are there to I, essentially clean up the, the world maybe once it gets destroyed, even though that doesn't even really matter or make any sense here in this instance, it's, right? It seems like the system just resets and everything's just like back to normal. I don't like I actually thought in my head, oh, when the world gets remade, the terraforming robots go back to the, like their original like duty to go and produce or to, to re make everything and fix it all up and then we just do it again but i don't even think that's that's how this works i think it just maybe just resets and it goes back but then if that were really true then what purpose do terraforming robots even fucking serve here hell why even have quote-unquote terraforming robots when it could just be the kaiju right like they're they're clearly these factories in the simulation being made to create these things so why have that and I think that maybe what we're going to get here at the end is the reasoning behind some of that. Because, okay, so let's say this is Kisaragi's simulation or something like that. Why are we seeing this? Like, haven't we already left on these so-called pods? Or what What did we call them? Something that uh, Yuki brought up last episode. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, it's pretty early on here. The probes. Yes. To carry the DNA of the, sa the 15 safely transport. Two of them trust their hopes of their clones. Yes. So it's like these probes that are basically like keep, they continue to propagate right they repair each other they repair or they repair themselves based off other units and they it's a way of them uh carrying humanity literal light years away to find a new planet and uh reproduce and recreate and i guess the point we really don't know or i'm not quite certain about is like where are we from there do we land on a planet do we set up a seemingly a new facility on that planet are we creating it and if that's true then why does the simulation exist what is like why is it we're still going through that have we never left maybe everyone's already fucking dead and we're still on the ship and we never actually went anywhere you know it's I, and it's also even funnier, actually, I think about it, like the thing with um, uh, Kisaragi bot, right? She's supposedly on a satellite that's orbiting a planet, right? But we're not actually, she's not actually on a satellite, is she? Right? Like that's not in the real world she's on a satellite and in, in orbiting a planet. I don't think when they got quote unquote shifted, because being shifted doesn't mean anything. It just means you're moving around in this program, right? <laughs> like, I'm like, the more I think about it, the more it's like, well, this, this shit doesn't, right? Unless there's actually a fucking satellite that, but then that would also mean that technically, doesn't that, isn't there like some celestial body that was programmed into this simulation that uh, Kisaragi bot in the satellite has to be orbiting around to, to actually have that work? I don't know. Or maybe there actually is a fucking planet and that she is outside of the simulation when she shifted somehow. Somehow that's what happened. I don't know. A lot of questions I still have. And I hope that we uh, get that answered here, which what, in what might perhaps be the final episode. It kind of depends how how long this uh, goes on for. But we have two more, I believe, with Goto here. Uh, and then I think two more fights at the end. And then apparently you guys did say that after the credits roll, there is actually an additional scene added in analysis. So I hope so. God, there's like still so many questions, but it's always a possibility to and the ending, especially for a game like this. I, I would not be surprised if it's quite extensive. So, uh, if it ends up being super ridiculously long, I might have to end up splitting it into like two episodes, but yeah, fuck. So my head is just like fucking spiraling with this this revelation because it's like which i mean it's a it's a good choice but i just hope that there is like some answers some solid hopefully satisfying answers to some of this to go the root of the matrix you know to not make it feel like like this is just feels like bullshit you know because i feel like up to this point everything has been felt really like good to me so far and i just i'm slightly nervous that this revelation might just kind of like fuck everything up if there isn't like solid enough ground for it. But all right. We have done literally everybody else. Clear, 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 clear. 
All that's left is Renya motherfucking Goto. So yeah, I think based on his percentage here, he has two left. So after, after interacting with Miwako Sawatari and the others, Chihiro decided to evacuate 1.2 million civilians to Sector 3. Here's the other thing, too. Why even do that, right? What is, like, the, the 1.2 million people, like, if they're technically just not real, right? They're just fake people? Even Miwako, sadly, seems like she's a fake person. So are we maybe planning to actually move their AI into other people? Potentially. And now I even think about why are there only 15 of us? Is that all the, that's all the DNA we had to send? Was it literally everybody else dead? So all we had was 15 people? I don't know. I'm just going to be curious to see what they end up doing with this 1.2 million civilians. Why even bother saving them? Not to sound fucking, you know, crude or evil or anything, but I'm actually, it does, it does leave me a little bit of like, what's the point? <laughs> Can we do something with them? Well, let's fucking find out. Goto! Show us the truth, Goto. Oh, fuck. Goto's luck. This data is... Is that you, Goto? It's been a while. Oh, that is totally, uh... Keith Silverstein, I think? K Kyle Silverstein? Guy does, uh... Bad guy from Persona 5. I used to I, his name I can't remember because there's too many Japanese names in my head right now. Ken Kengo Agata, so that must be Nenji's father. The last time I saw you was two months before my death. What? Chairman Okata. An AI construct based on Chairman Kengo Okata. Why would this be in Morimura's files? I see. So this is how she managed to raise all those funds. She must have used this AI to access the Shikishima Chairman's hidden network. Not quite. I'm afraid that was originally my idea. The good Professor Morimura was only following my orders. So all of this was by design. Your design? Leaking the prototype nanomachinery to the black market. What? The catastrophic consequences. You're the one who exploited her. If you blame anyone, blame yourself. Wait, say it again? She must use the AI to access it. Not quite. I'm afraid that was originally my idea. The good professor was following my orders. Also by your design, by design, your design. Even the even the the nano machine incident, the infection incident. We were so close to losing Project Arc entirely. Now we must prioritize the project above all else. I'll finally have my second chance at life. Oh fuck. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. This guy intentionally had Murimura like cause this infection. I, I mean, I don't know if Murimura was aware of it. He may sound like he used her, but I don't know if she was actually uh, like aware of what she was doing when that happened. But the, it basically forced whoever was in charge, the government, space government, to be like, now this project project arc which was originally just gonna die potentially right or go nowhere now all of our efforts have to go into it because humanity is literally dying but it sounds like this guy's just doing it so that he can live again that's all he gives a shit about a brave new earth is waiting for me yes good Dead. By that hitman's hands, I presume. That's humanity. Self-destructive to the very I think end. this is the last 2188 scene. Only a few survivors left now. On that timeline. I give them three days at most. Yeah. These are all like, there's like maybe five, four people left at this point. This is after like everything that's happened. This is actually, I think the scene that happens right before we see young Iori and Juro and Akino on the UFO. My deepest condolences for your imminent death. <laughs> Shut up, Construct. Your project is over. Unfortunately for you, the Ark has already set off. It's still within comms range. You don't have clearance. I refuse to let an AI control the future of humanity. Out of this 
survivors. The ones who would have clearance. Wow. Fuck. So, suppose I am the professor. Then what? I want to know the truth. Tell me. I want to know the reasons behind all of this. But that seems unlikely. I imagine you're not inclined to tell me anything. And why's that? It'd be inconvenient for you if we had all the facts. Because she wants us to fail. Considering you're trying to eliminate us. Oh, by, by the way, you guys actually point out a really cool, another like, you know, hint at stuff going on. Renya Goto's, um, when he gets into critical state, right? Everyone has like a line or something that happens, right? Uh, and in Goto's case, Chihiro reaches out to him and she's like ready to give up. And he's like, this game isn't over yet. Uh, and now in, in, in hindsight, I realize, oh, fuck. She's like rooting for him to lose. He's like, all right, well, it looks like you're about to die. Ready to give up. And I, I think the bet here, right? There was a moment where it sounded like they made a bet with each other. And they probably will at the end of this scene. We don't know what it is, but I'm betting is I bet we're going to lose. I bet this world's going to be destroyed and you all will fail, right? And because that, that's what at one moment she's like, it seems like I'm about to win this bet of ours uh, when she's seeing everyone and everything get destroyed. But then, of course, she ends up actually helping them. She has a, ch a change of heart. From the very beginning, you never intended for this world to survive. If Operation Aegis succeeds, a world reset will no longer be possible. This operation goes against Professor Morimura's agenda. She will stop at nothing to prevent it. Hmm. This re you think I'm trying to destroy the world? I do. So you think I'm enabling the Kaiju now? Even though I've got more reason to hate them than any of you? That is true, at least. You're clearly not on the Kaiju's side. After all, they are a threat to your primary objective. Which would be to carry out the plan you formed in 2188. However, that plan may now be untenable. The situation has deviated too drastically. <sighs> Recall when I brought you to the underground UFO. I believe you said something like... It was out of your hands. Hmm, okay. I think I'm just putting this plot together. This is the mainframe of the UFO? Yes. Honestly, Okino-kun. You can't take anything else in life seriously. So why do you put so much time into all this? <laughs> <sighs> Okino. Just talking to myself. More importantly, look at this mess. Something unpleasant must have happened here. Most likely. A Shikishima android. Probably left here by Ida-san. They've all been shot. External damage suggests the weapon was a phaser. They're all out of commission. Too damaged to function. I see. Were those the robots that came after Kino? Is that what these are doing here? I don't know, maybe? I feel like these robots have been here for a long fucking time. It depends on which UFO this is, right? Uh, I don't I don't know. I think those were already, but that happened really late, right? And I feel like these robots have been here for a, a really extended period of time. I don't know, I'd have to go back and check. I'm sure we've seen it by this point. Is it really possible? I have a fairly comprehensive grasp of this system. This abnormality all comes down to the decode, right? I should be able to get rid of it. Why would Miss Morimura push for Operation Aegis if this was an option all along? Well, you said it yourself. She's either being controlled by someone, 
Or she could be trying to save herself. That's not right. Oh. What is she doing? Hold on. That file system hadn't even been analyzed yet. How did you gain access? I have a senior admin ID. Access privileges for the entire system. You somehow got access to an account that high level? Yes. I have my ways. This is no good. Sector 3's mainframe has been damaged in an attack. It's barely operational. I won't be able to process much here. Well, not much choice. I'll have to send direct instructions to the command ship. Command ship? The mothership in orbit. It can send commands directly to the UFO. Is it? An arc? Some grand design from the people of the future? Either that or a base of operations for an alien invasion. The comms channel to the command ship is cut off. Must be hiding somewhere beyond the horizon. Looks like about 35 minutes until the comms reconnect. But we don't have that long. Time to find another link. Will this fix cut off the Kaiju's attacks? It should be able to solve the problem at its core. However, we can't stop any commands that were already processed. That's out of my hands. Which means... We'll still have to deal with the Kaiju already generated. We don't know how many the factories have produced. If we could just verify their numbers... We're going to need the Sentinels after all. That may be best. Oh God! Operation Aegis is too much of a risk. Demon face. Hmm. In other words, the decode's activation is a blow you cannot recover from. Hmm. Okay. So we ended up really using both the Aegis system and the Sentinels, right? But that was never the plan. It seems like initially, before we got to the this system, we have to do the, use the Aegis system. It was initially just the Sentinels. That's the only thing we need to worry about. And we're going to destroy the Kaiju and maybe stop the factories or from creating them or whatever. Or just hold them off until... I don't know. I don't know exactly what the, the full plan of the Sentinel project was. Like, what was the end game? They just would stop, kill all the ones that were made and then stop them? No matter how you try to fix it, your plan is irreversibly impacted. The most direct fix would be eliminating the decode. Then, you would just restart the loop anew. That would revert the situation back to the original plan. Which is, in essence, your goal. You're overthinking this. I feel like I have to stop and just like sort of understand what he's saying here. Decode's activation is a blow you cannot recover from. The most direct fix would be eliminating the decode. The decode is what's calling the kaiju, right? Or is the decode what the fluffy has been putting in there? I don't know. Fuck. Ah, uh, let me look. Hold on. The Daimos code. Fluffy explains to Megumi Yakushi the Daimos, the relic of an ancient civilization that destroyed other world. Daimos code is the code that summons the Daimos. Also called the decode for short, it is broadcasted by someone designated the commander, which gives a signal for the kaiju to attack. The decode's function is to maintain a link to one commander and access three locations at regular intervals. Has this always been here though? She says she wants to eliminate the decode because the problem is it keeps calling the kaiju so it, it will literally never end. But she wants us to fail, right? Fuck, I probably should just keep going. In order to trigger a loop, you need them to destroy all the sector's mainframes. And therein lies your goal. You want this world destroyed so the timeline can be reset. <laughs> but you have one major obstacle, and that's Operation Aegis. Aegis isn't just an ordinary defense system. It causes a terminal to seal itself off in self-defense, preventing anyone from using it to control the world. Once all the terminals are sealed off, we'll be severed from the mainframe, effectively preventing any further loop or extinction. But if that happens, your plan is null and void. 
we'd be stuck in a loop where your goal was impossible. And then what is that goal? Fine then. Let's say all your wild speculation is correct. What do you plan to do about it? Time to die! Let's backtrack a little bit. We discussed the suspect of Miss Morimura's murder. And you asked me who I think did it. <sighs> if you actually are Professor Chihiro Morimura, then I believe you personally murdered Miss Morimura. Did I now? She was a staunch advocate of Operation Aegis. Mm. A thorn in your side, someone in the way of your reset. An interesting theory, if also an incorrect one. Believe me, I understand why you'd view me with hostility. Certainly Renya Goto was responsible for chasing you out of Newman. Even if it was on Shikishima's behalf, a buyer simply eliminating liabilities. After that, you took the lead on Project Ark. Under Kengo Ogata's oversight. Kengo Ogata. Kengo Ogata, of course, being Ninji Ogata's father. And Shikishima's chairman, who recognized your talent. Right. He passed away in 2187. His age caught up with him. But the other Kengo Ogata is perhaps more relevant. The one you created after his death using his memories. Mm. An AI construct. You were letting it control you. I was just getting advice. Dug that out of a log too? Yes. Renya Goto found that AI. The log was recorded in the colony after your death. Once your clone reaches 18 years of age, you set it so that she'd download your memories. <sighs> it's clear this project was not a selfish endeavor. I'm sure you felt a sense of duty to save humanity. But you were also trying to bring Kengo Ogata back to life. So Professor Morimura takes over Chihiro Morimura's clone. She's trying to bring Kengo Ogata back to life? What the fuck? Why the fuck did she give so much of a shit about this guy? And presumably, Kengo Ogata would take over Nenji Ogata's clone. <sighs> That's why you're so intent on sticking to the plan. Certainly, from your perspective, Miss Murimura was expendable. She had to die. Her very survival endangered your ultimate goal. Well, that is a shame. This isn't ideal, but you know too much. Die, Goto! Goodbye. Goodbye! Shatana! Uh, I, bet, I bet I had to see the end of Takatoshi's before I, I probably saw this, or, or something. Or got into the end of destruction. So this is it, alright? This is the, uh... Yep. This is the final 2188 scene before we jump to this. God damn, though, this, that, that is not much of a transition from this point to this point. Fuck. So her goal is to bring back Kengo Ogata and herself. So what, they could start over and repair everything? Why was she not... God damn, this shit... Like, Goto is just throwing, like, lore after lore at me right now. And I'm like, I'm really having a hard time keeping up with all this. Hearing him rather than... Wait, what? This early? Wait. Did he already have her by this point? Oh, he did. Jira kidnapped. The compatible. A familiar sunset. The visage of my sister accessing the mothership. Proof of qualification. You got one more event. And then I'm guessing the ending events here. Okay. Chihiro. When the 2188 Professor Chihiro Marimura's memories were restored to Chihiro, she witnessed the destruction caused by the Kaiju invasion and the extent of the situation's deviation from her original plan for Project Ark. Jira decides that for her plan to succeed, she'll need a fresh start with a new world, devoid of all these problems and variables. Although they are both Chihiro Morimura, Morimura and her efforts to enable Operation Aegis were obstacles to the original plan, so Chihiro kills her. Uh, so there was a point where 2188 Professor Chihiro Morimura's were restored to Chihiro? Or is this now? This Chihiro? She sees what ends up happening. 
I think that is the case. It's just this hero right now. She just determined this after seeing all the destructions happen. She then decides that for her plan to succeed, that she'll need a fresh start with a new world. So she wants everything to be returned to monkey, to be returned to absolutely like zero. But how would she even know she will come back and not be dead with everybody else and gone forever? Is she even aware that this is their last chance, right? Because they seem to, that's something they talked about is that this is their last chance. Kengo Ogata. <laughs> no face, just a screen. Father of the 2188 Ninji Ogata, as well as the chairman of Shikishima Group. He died in 2187, but he left behind a simulated AI construct of his personality. He is responsible for manipulating Professor Murimura and pressing Project Arc forward, planning to revive himself through the use of the interlocutor and cloning technology on the new Earth. So she was being used by Ogata, but then why would... Does she just want to, is she like, feel like she can't do anything without him, so she has to bring him back? How long has this plan been in, if, like, they're making it sound like, well, the moment she witnessed the kaiju attacking, she came up with this plan. Did this just happen, or has this been her plan, like, a billion years ago? She couldn't, couldn't have known about the kaiju back then. Maybe she, maybe that's what he was saying, maybe her original plan before the kaiju showed up was just having both Ninji Agata or his father come back, and then they would together rebuild the world if try to fix things because they felt they were the only ones that could even though his father seems like he's kind of a dickhead automated factory jiri used her senior admin id in the ufo's mainframe to stop the automated factory from producing kaiju okay so uh, okay meaning that there is actually an end to it so she actually helped us there right yeah she actually helped us there although maybe juro reversed that when he like added the new code in there right that enabled the meta chips and shit uh Artificial satellite in orbit, also called the command ship or mothership in orbit. Here, access this in order to stop the automated factory's mass production of Dymos. At least supposedly. All right. Uh, oh, you had to get 100% with everybody. This has to be your last one. Wow. Cool. Well, this is it. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Randy Goto claimed that Chiro is the one who murdered Miss Murray Mura. Chiro aimed a gun at him. He knows Tito's too much. Oh, back to this scene. Takatoshi. Initiating meta skill analysis. This shouldn't take too long. With a Kino. I'll send you the data once it's ready. Uh, that would be great. But I must say, this is a surprise. Okino kun really managed to push this through? Integrating this half coded thing into the control system? Thank you. <sighs> Oh, well, Okino wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Okino-kun said that? He said the analysis wasn't complete yet. So he appreciates your help with all this. I see. To look at you, anyone might think you are just a child. But you must be a truly exceptional individual. The message was Okino's, and I'd like you to know I'm grateful as well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must return to the battle. <laughs> that boy. So he appreciates me, does he? Maternal instincts kicking in. Even if still baby. Well, that is a shame. Time to die, go to. This isn't ideal, but you know too much. Goodbye. Not my face. Please, not my face. You cannot shoot me with that gun. So anyone who knows the truth of Aegis is a liability to you. And liabilities must be dealt with. Does that sum it up? Wow. You cannot shoot me with that gun. Did he switch it out or something? If you recall... I specifically acquired this gun for your purposes. You had concerns about self-defense. Oh. I can guess what happens next. Now you're going to use it to shoot me. Yes, time to die, bitch. Perhaps I wasn't clear. For safety reasons, neither one of us can be shot with this gun. Oh, okay. I configured it very specifically. Good job, Goto. As 
I suspected. This gun records the time of its last discharge. And that time looks to be a near match for Miss Morimura's estimated time of death. Damn. So she actually would have shot him. <laughs> it wasn't like she has some change change of heart then like, no, I can't shoot you, Goto. So she would have murdered the fuck out of him. Which suggests you use this gun to murder her. Now, on the day of the crime, you yourself were using the drone to keep tabs on Miss Morimura, weren't you? Based off of your expenses for that day, I presume you took a taxi to the crime scene. How much do you have in that pocket? I <laughs> know, right? Were you just playing dumb this whole time? When did you realize? What gave away that I was the professor and not her? Miura. There was a specific moment. It was back when Miura found you here. You described Miura as an excellent design engineer. Ah. Oh. But the Miura of 2188 was the design engineer, not him. Did you dig that out of Renya Goto's log too? No. That I learned through Miura, the AI of Sentinel number 17. BJ. He also told me about the existence of the logs. So, what happens to me now? You die! If you're not killing me, I assume you're at least locking me up? Considering what you did to Miss Morimura, I'm admittedly conflicted. You're going to baby jail. <laughs> but I just put a crate on top of her. Ah! Let me out! But giving into my emotional reaction wouldn't solve anything. Vengeance isn't going to bring her back. So, with that in mind, I would rather choose the path that gets me closer to the truth. That is what I want now. And then I'll kill you. To see what lies at the end of all this. To see what she never could. You told an obvious lie. You made it clear Juro Izumi was not your cup of tea. Mm. Yet you and Izumi shared an intimate relationship in the year 2188. Yeah, that's why he would have done whatever he did, right? To it's sure that her uh, AI was in Sector Zero. That was clear enough from all the evidence I found. Even the placement seemed intentional. You and Izumi, together in Sector One. Oh. You died before you could set up the memory transplant. Hmm. At that point, I can only assume, Izumi sympathized with you and helped carry out your vision. Ah. So they were born or, or were together in the same sector. But then how would they assure that they would even meet? That they would come together? Fate? <laughs> there does seem to be a lot of that here. I talked to Shishi and Okino who got back together and so did a whole bunch of other characters. I can certainly understand Kengo Ogata's motive. He just wants to live again. But you, why are you so intent on transplanting your memory? Because there has to be a leader. Without someone to guide them, teams dissolve into fear, spite, resentment. It'd be the colony all over again. Yeah, that was so great for you guys last I time. See. As I suspected, your devotion to this goal is inspiring in some ways. But fuck you. Are you a gambling woman? <laughs> oh, here we go. So we're the, they're going to make the bet, right? I'd like to propose a bet. We'll leave the terminals alone for you. We won't let Aegis seal everything off. Your loop would still be viable. And in exchange? As it currently stands, it'd be impossible to revert to your original plan without some compromise. But consider this. Even this final phase won't truly be the end. We'll have plenty of struggles beyond it. Plenty more pain ahead of us. If we can prove to you that we will overcome that, if we prove to you that we can face the unknown, then are we not worthy to take up your cause, inheriting your goal, and seeing it through? You make an interesting point. 
we can solve this problem ourselves. No, fuck you, Goto! Suck a gun! <laughs> she pulls out again, shoots him right in the dick. <laughs> ah, ah. Time paradox, motherfucker! So my proposal is this. Let us fight our war. No sabotage. If we fail, then I could hardly object to a reset anyway. That's your bet? You don't stand a chance. Well, I suppose we'll see about that. <laughs> I'll show you, bitch. But he's like, just don't do anything to undermine us. Aegis activated. Is anyone too compromised to keep fighting? We barely had a moment to breathe. The girls may be pushing their limits. I'm still okay. I can keep fighting. There are three terminals remaining. We can protect two of them with Aegis. But we're on our own with the last terminal. How much longer do we need to hold out? We need to re-establish a connection with Miyuki Inaba. That's still ten hours off. Ten hours we don't have. This is the most recent scene. Plan is our last hope. Then we fight to the last. Until we have nothing left. Brace yourself, Kentaro. We are soldiers, and this is the moment we train for. This is the day we die. Hours, days, it doesn't matter. We'll hold the line. Let's go. Shihiro san. <laughs> you're listening, aren't you? If you're out there, please respond. What is it now? You. You know a way to link up with the command ship. One that doesn't rely on its position, don't you? You're thinking of when I revise the decode. Right now, we need that shortcut. And this is where you reveal some new leverage over me. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what log you found this time. No. This time. I'm asking a favor. You have to be joking. You do realize the position I'm already in? I do. Even still, all I can do is beg. I just want us to have a chance. <sighs> this is the most idiotic... I lied to you, you know. Do you know which lie I'm talking about? Not this time. When I said I wasn't going to like you. <laughs> You're an infuriating man, Renya Goto. Goto! Chihiro-san. Ready? Everyone, listen to me. We can communicate with the command ship out of range. I'm realigning the three surveillance satellites to their relay positions. Oh, fuck. We should be connected soon. However, the satellites have to move outside their preset tracks. They'll enter the gravity well and plummet to Earth. Your connection will only last until they hit the surface. Simulated Earth, right? You'll barely have any time to do this. Am I clear? Thank you. Honestly, humans can be so irrational. Unless this is actually real. Maybe this is actually the real planet and they're real satellites and this is a real command ship and Somehow when they got shifted, they, she got shifted outside of that simulation into a command shift simulation. I I don't know. Though I guess I might be the most irrational one here. Isn't that right, Mr. Bunny? If you actually manage to pull this off, then I expect you all to take responsibility. Jihiro. Good luck. Big bro! Big brother. Yeah. Almost connected. She's like, damn it, shut up! This is your only chance. Initiating communication. Here we go. Show me. <sighs> to the final battle. To the moment of truth and justice. Go, go, clear! All stories cleared. Oh my god. Okay. 
I think it's all fairly straightforward by this point. It means everything in the past here, right? Yep, everything is done. Arriving at the truth. And now what's left? Sentimental. Last hope. All these events here. That's all that's left. Jura Izumi 2188. The Izumi of 2188 shared an intimate relationship with Professor Murimura. Since Murimura died before she could execute the memory transplant, Izumi carries out her plan of transplanting her memories as Professor Chair... Uh, Professor Murimura and her clone Chihiro Murimura. So that they would be together. Although, like, I guess... But her plan is... I'm still not even totally certain what her plan is. She, oh, she, she wants a leader, right? So they need a leader. That's what she says. She, so they need someone to, to head everything. Even though she's already showed that she fucking sucks at it, right? Everyone ends up dying a painful, stupid death. In 2088, she caused the freaking... Uh, nanomachine incident anyway. And she's clearly un unable, to do, unable to do anything without the direction of Nenji's father. I'm surprised that Jiro wouldn't have put himself in there too, you know, so that he could be with her. But they did make it so that if they're in their second life, they would still be born in like the same sector, sector one, right? Uh, Miura. The scar on Miura's forehead is the result of Tsukasa Kino's nanomachine adjustment, which restarts the sentinels that stopped working due to DD-426. Oh, without losing his mind and suffering the effects of DD-426, Miura managed to endure the pain as the data necessary for starting up the sentinels was completed. Once Akina realized this, he stalls a feature so that the data will spread to anyone who comes into contact with Miura. Hey, there it is. There it is. So this is this is how they end up bypassing DD-426. Unbeknownst to, like, uh, Murray Murray and probably even Ida. Because I, I was like, how do we... I still wasn't sure, even sure about that. Because clearly what Izumi was doing with changing the decode, I don't think affected that. But everyone who comes into contact with Miura basically has that put into them. And now the... Uh, infected sentinels won't get fucked up anymore, right? Won't fuck them up anymore, I think. Yeah. Uh, Shuamaguchi. When Amaguchi was shot by... M it seems like they're, they're throwing in just, like, stuff like... By the way... Oh, by the way, we might have forgotten to mention this. When Amaguchi was shot by Megumi Yakashiji up on the rooftop, it activated Sentinel number 20. Prior to this, Amaguchi had already come into contact with Kitar Miura when he had to carry Miura back to his house after an Ninja Goddess altercation at the shopping district. For that reason, Amaguchi was already affected by the force activation for Sentinels that Tsukasa Kino embedded into Miura. Uh, yeah, okay, yep. I was just clarifying when that happened. I already kind of pieced that together. Okino. While the Sentinels couldn't be activated due to the effects of DD-426, Okino got them operational again by creating a code that reconstructed the nanomachines to nullify the effects of DD-426. He then applied the code to, to Miura, Sentinel number 19, which led to the completion of the Sentinel activation data. Furthermore, he made it so that the completed data would spread to the other pilots as long as they come into contact with Miura. He's like, God, I just hope everyone com comes into contact with him at some point. <laughs> None of the people affected by this don't. Otherwise, that's going to make us a little rough. In 1945, the DD-426 was successfully disabled thanks to Akino's nanomachine reconstruction and Kitaro Miura's efforts. Kitaro Miura is being juggled around by other characters. His ability to go in and make contact with every protagonist. All right, we're up to, Oh my god, we're only up to 83%. Jesus Christ, we must get an absolute shitload of fucking files at the end of this game. Good lord. All right, well, that's it. That's the end of Remembrance. Now, onwards to the final battles. Here we go. I think just two battles, unless we unlock another final... Uh... Area 4 or something. Although I said there was three terminals at this point, right? Uh, oh, got only four strike strike team members? Clear that essential being immobilized. Uh, what are we dealing with? Horde of high quad kaiju will appear. Uh, super large missile. Ida, Ida's files. Ew, that sounds good. I definitely want that. Uh, okay, so only four people, huh? Damn it. Of course, my the high quad guys, I really would love to have had these had them in there, but fine. I'll just, uh, I'll put A in here. I'm going to beef them up a bit. Uh, give me the power! Uh. Who else is not level 30 yet? Yakashiji. Mira. All right. So A. Uh, we're just going to have one of each here. Iori, Mira, and Yakashiji. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, come on, another new one? A new one? If I could just hit it from a blind spot while it's charging its plasma cannon. I need to pilot perfectly to get in close, even if it means I might not come back. 
Don't talk like that, Megumi. This isn't like you. But I'm the one who got everyone into this mess. I figured you were just some prissy little nerd whining about your problems. But you're a real badass. More than these guys, anyway. You're okay in my book. Come on, follow my lead. So go out to place the Glory. Glory, uh, after CG. Plan. Stay in formation. Shut up, all of you. You're not listening to me. All right. Let's do this. At his side. That's right. We got A, a and her, which is good. Synergy. All right, slow this shit down. Boom. Yakushiji, whip out your interceptors. All right. Uh, big dickhead. All right, remove your limits and go eight. Return to monkey. Uh, All right, push shield on everybody. Choice he's facing. God, it's so hard to see. He's fucking. Uh, clearly, he's facing this direction, and I can't. Hold on. Ah, fuck it. Okay, I broke one of them. Next. Okay, we're doing d doing damage. Holy shit! Ah! Oh my god, I couldn't even kill those dumb helicopters. Damn it! Fuck! Focus on the battle, Yori. Please don't push. The barrier up. Kill that guy. Oh my god. Heal. Ah, let the rain come down. The itsy bitsy spider. We're at the water spout, motherfucker. Kill these big, thick dickheads. No mercy, eh? Good charge. Uh, okay, still got his move. Uh, god, the Gen 1s are so fucking good. Oh my god, we are getting fucked up. Uh, terminal recovery. Yeah, the problem with this is I have no guys to really... It's only four dudes. Ugh. There's so many missiles coming in here. Actually, this is where having the having Shu and his uh, his move would really be helpful. His mind move, actually. Having A go in here and kill the really big guys. While the rest handle the smaller ones. Oh my god, her shield must have just run out. I'm really messing up your sentinel. We'll fix the sentinel if we have to. Just fall back. I am not getting an S rank this time. But at the very least, I want to get the uh, the one that requires four people. Well, so then the next time I can bring it six. Can I survive the Good. What the hell? Focus on the battle, he Please. Wait, what just happened? Jeez. Did he like... Oh, was the laser still firing out? And he like jumped in front of it and it actually hit him? Fuck you. What the hell? The active hitbox on that. Okay. Uh, heal team. Damn, I was not, I did not think that's how that worked. But okay. I was like, what just happened? Ah, I killed both of me. There we go. Dead. You definitely, definitely didn't get us rank. But I at least fulfilled the four requirement. All right, here's the, here's that scene now. The rest of it.
really managed to pull this off. Then I expect you all to take responsibility. Shihiro. Good luck, big brother. Onicha! Almost connected. This is your only chance. Initiating communication. I'm connected. I never imagined this kind of workaround. This is where we're at. We've got two terminals left. What do we do? The processing is almost done. I'm getting back to working on the mainframe. Even if you cover the next one, there'll still be one terminal left. Activate Aegis for that one. Yes. All right. I will take what I can get on this one. Oh my god. We did it. MVP was Iori and her freaking sentry guns. Um, you're a guy's level 30 ability classmates. And so Jack CG. I believe that everybody is now at level 30 and has got their moves. Look out, Jero! Look out, Jero! All right. Boom, 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 boom. Took a fuck ton of damage. Got a C rank. Yeah, that's what I expected. But at least fulfilled this. So I got Ida's files. Got some points. Gonna spend those points. I am not ready to proceed. Okay, look out, Juro. Whenever crowd base HP decreases, weight speed increases. Okay. Uh, and Mira, classmate. If Mira attacks after Hijama, attack increases. Oh, that's cool. All right, everybody is fucking there. Now I'm gonna do that again so I get S rank. You like that? Oh, I know she's a god. Oh, here's the homing missile I never used. Wow, the area effect on this shit. Oh, oh it takes time to get there. Oh, and it's just going in and plowing. Through all these enemies. Boom! Oh, I did some fucking damage, even through armor. There we go. And then immediately S rank this shit. It's amazing how much how much easier it is having two more sentinels, and also I feel like the I don't know, just the skills I have for the last one didn't help that situation. No one took any damage, and there we go. Super large missile. All right, let's have a look. Ida's files, a report from the civilian detective agency that Tetsuya I Ida uses. It is nearly 200 pages long and has detailed information on the following 11 people. Yuki Takamiya, Tomiki Suragi, Yori Fiyosaka, Renya Goto, Jirokurabe, Nasuno Minami, Megumi Yakushiji, Shuomaguchi, Chihiro Marimura, Ryoko Shinome, and Jigata. Out of all of them, the documents on Tomiki Suraki the most extensive by far. Of course they are. So who's missing from that group? Uh, Takitoshi is one. Actually, we have Chihiro Marimura in there, which means, oh, Miura is not in here. Chihiro Marimura and Uyori Fuyosaka, so that, that means we're missing actually t uh, two people. Or actually, three people. Well, nothing on Akino, obviously. Oh, uh, Sekigahara is not in here. That's who it is. Okay. Uh, and super large missile. Third generation Sentinel armament. Fires a powerful missile that can decimate a large area. The giant missile is 9.1 meters long and weighs one ton. Utilizing electromagnetic barriers, TNT, and aluminum dust, this weapon creates a widespread, wide ranging dust explosion. Neat. Get fucked. Okay. No, it looks like the. Brett. We only got 2% there. There's clearly a few more fights after this. And since we do it, technically have, you know, one more terminal after this one. Enhanced giant high quad kaiju will appear. Giant. Okay. Um. All right. Clear with that sentinel being immobilized. Maintain terminal defense rate of 50% or higher. All right. Let's give it a go. Oh, fuck. Ground vibrations detected. I'll send the drones to check it out. Warning. Dymo signatures. Big golden one. Preparing to intercept. Initiating tactical analysis. What is that? I can't even see the top of it. It's gigantic. Guess this is another of their upgrades. Is it related to those four-legged ones? But it's massive. 300 meters in height. It's 
the largest Dimos we've seen. We've got it's Godzilla! They're trying to still waiting for the actual Godzilla one. Juro's right. This is the system's countermeasure against you to level the playing field. Wasn't this system supposed to give us an advantage? It's set to a level that makes sure they can compete with us, at least. It could go either way. What actually happens is all up to you. Guess they're throwing all they can at us. All we have to do is take them down, right? I'm on it. Pijiyama-kun, just remember, the mission is to protect the terminal. Those bad, I must destroy the high quad X. How much health does this motherfucker have? Oh my god. Uh, a hundred thousand. It's actually not that bad compared to what was it, like the million or something or multi-million the giant bomb one had. We'll see how much damage we end up doing to him. All right, let's get the interceptors out. You already get your sentry guns out. Just chuck it the fuck in there, boo. This ends today. No point overthinking it. Limiter removal. Go the fuck in, NG. Okay. Punch him. Oh wait, there was only one guy there. Shit. That's it. Let's see. Stun him. Get the crap out of here. Oh my god, I'm all out of demolisher blades. Give him CEP back. Boom. Missile range uses to stop any missiles coming in, honestly. Always think ahead. All right, demolish your blades. Uh, which way is he facing? The other way. All right, perfect. Uh, yeah. Almost one shot him. <laughs> Good freaking lord. Ninja, calm down. What? No, he's not. We're fine. Oh, fuck me. New guy. Two new guys. Universal control processing is at 95%. It's almost there. Keep the giant Dimos in check and protect the terminal. Do I have to kill those two? Blow them up, Takanoshi. Get fucked. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Get it. He just will activate for this terminal soon. Just one left. Inaba-san, what's happening? Is everything still running? The processing is complete. It looks like it worked. The mainframe is responding. Really? You mean we actually won? It's not over yet. Everyone all right. Third area defended. <laughs> oh my god, Ninji doing uh all the work and then Tak Dushi coming for the assist. Hope you're watching out there. He's ready! And he's just gonna go ahead and level up like 30 times. Boom boom boom. Uh, type 98 biped. Mission accomplished. What was that? All the... Yeah, complete all objectives and destruction. Shit, I guess the, the final battles don't have any objectives on them? Uh, dinner from the other night. What? Supreme Defender. A new area has been unlocked. Earn S rank in 30 terminal defense areas. Final Sakura Sakura reward. Overall story pro what, why were we even locked it off? I had to get overall story progress at 100 percent anyway. <laughs> in this area. Why is it like, well, again, just in case you hadn't gotten it yet. When I need it at this point. Whatever. Final area soccer reward is now available. One supreme fight remains. First look what I got. Type 98 biped. You've never really got a good look at these things. 
A weaponized mech that predated the Sentinels, equipped with 16 rocket launchers and two Gatling guns. With no way of handling close course combat, they were swiftly outclassed as the Kaiju drew near. Gotcha. Um, dinner from the other night. Dinner Megumi Akashiji made for Jirokurabe the other night. It consists of five dishes, salt, grilled mackerel, shikuzu ni, a Japanese style uh, rolled omelet, rice, and miso soup. It was set up to be shared between two people, <laughs> but had enough food to feed like 30. Damn. Yummy. I feel, like I feel like Megumi would make a good housewife. Like seriously, holy shit. Some, you'd be living with some good eats. Final area, sock reward. Final area. Moment of truth. 